everyone, it's Stephanie back with another fiber video. Today what I'm going to do is make a bat that I'm probably going to spin during the tour, tour de fleece. And so what I'm I thought it would be fun is if I brought you all along with me while I was making this bat and talked a little bit about the tour de fleece and sort of my philosophy on the whole no stress nature of our team. Because I've gotten a lot of comments about that from people and I think it's really important that this is something we talk about because I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I can really fall into this, everything's got to be perfect, and if it's not perfect, then I'm not good enough, and all it does is add more stress onto me. And what I'm trying to do when I'm spinning and in this fiber world is de-stress. And so I don't wanna add something onto any of us that's going to cause us more stress. So that's why my approach to, to the tour de fleece is decidedly lower stress, okay? But right now, let's get started making this bat. So I have about four ounces of Rambouillet. These are locks that I have washed and processed. I also have some, if you can see it, some flax. I have some black alpaca, some silk wool, and some other silk waste that I'll be adding in. But I'm first going to start with the Rambouillet because the alpaca is thinner and so I want this Rambouillet as a base in my drum. So we're gonna just add that in. And I'm adding the locks sort of, they're jumbled up, they're not really in any order. I'm just teasing them out even a little bit more because sometimes the picker doesn't get rid of all of the second cuts, like, or little pieces that I don't want in there. So I like to be able to feel what I'm doing with the fiber. And I'm going to just add sort of a nice, real thin base layer on, or base, yeah, base layer on here. Oops, sorry about that. I have a little piece here See that? That's too small. I'm taking that out. Okay, I'm just gonna keep adding, making sure I get some on the sides because I know me and I always end up with a lot in the middle here and not quite enough on the sides. So I'm going to make sure that I get some on the sides. And as usual, this is my sort of tone on tone method. I'm doing a lot of white and a lot of texture, not a whole lot of color on this one. It's got some in the wheel there. But that's okay, that's what I like right now and I'm going to go with it. It's more interesting to me right now to see how the different fibers of the same color can come together and really you know have some unique textures so I'm getting a little bit on the edge there too much I'm gonna try and add some in some places where I see I don't have enough. I'll just lay it on top there, that's okay. I 
and you see how I'm laying it on top, that's okay. You can do that. You can put it, feed it in through the drum. Either way is fine. It really is. So let's talk. Hold on a second. Let's talk a minute about crafting and what it brings to our lives. Because I feel like it brings a lot of, or it should bring a lot of rest and relaxation and joy into our lives. But if you're anything like me, sometimes you take something that should be joyful and you turn it into something that requires perfection. And for me, perfection is the opposite of joy. Um, perfection feels very stale to me. It feels like it's stealing something from you instead of giving something to you. And if you followed me at all, you know that I'm working to, if I make a mistake on something, that's okay. We can fix mistakes or we can just incorporate our mistakes into our work. Um, and that's what I'd like to see us do more of in the crafting community. And I know quite a few people are working toward that, talking about how crafting should be adding to our lives in a good way, not adding stress or anything else to us, but removing that stress from us, giving us a place to go that is our own making space, that is a place where we can play, where we can make mistakes, where we can just have fun. Because I think as we grow up and as we grow older, the world requires so much of us in terms of responsibility, in terms of um, making sure our lives are running smoothly, making sure our kids' lives are running smoothly, doing the best that we can, that we're exhausted by the end of the day. We're exhausted with everything. And the last thing you want is to sit down at your wheel or pick up your needles, feeling like you have to be perfect there also, feeling like it's another burden for you. So that's why when I started talking about doing the Tour de Fleece, I specifically um, said that I don't want anyone to feel any pressure. I don't want you all to feel like you have to spin a certain amount of yardage. Now it's fine if you want to, and it's fine if that doesn't stress you out and add a lot of difficulties to your life, but for me, it really would, honestly. Um, for me, if I had a certain yardage that I was trying to hit, and I didn't hit that, I would just end up feeling bad about myself. And I don't need any more reason for that. So that's why I specifically said, you don't have to come up with a yardage. What I want is for this just to be fun for us. I want it to be a time of community building, a time of just creating for the love and the joy of creating. Whoops. As you can see, I don't have my drum carter bolted to the table, which I really should. It's not good that I don't have it bolted down, but oh well, it is what it is. So I'm going to put this last little bit on here. Because I'm getting it really thick in one area and not quite as thick in the other areas. So what I think I'm gonna do is give this a second pass. You see how this is all bumpy in through here? Well, that's because it's all piling up right here. So I'm gonna go through and take this off. You notice I haven't added anything else in. That's because I want this Rambouillet layer to be thin, not thin, but smooth. And then I want the texture to come from the other things that I'm adding in. Okay, so I'm gonna run this through the carter again, 
just to kind of smooth it out and even out the way it is on the bat to do both of those. And let's raise this part up. So if you haven't, you're hearing me talk a lot about the Tour de Fleece. Um, we've got a group on Ravelry and a lot of people have signed up and a lot of people have mentioned really liking this no pressure approach. And it just got me thinking about how much pressure we put on each other and mainly on ourselves in our day-to-day -day life. And I know I personally, I deal with a lot of anxiety and depression. It's a family thing. My mom dealt with it and my brother deals with it. It's just one of those quirks of genetics that we passed down to each other. Not fun at all. Those of you who deal with any type of mental health issue, you know how difficult it can be. Well, a few years ago, I started really struggling with it even more. And so I went to my doctor and was referred to a, you know, a specialist, another doctor, and I got on medication and I do therapy and everything I'm supposed to to take care of myself that way. And what I've started to do is really consciously try to reorder my life so that the mental health issues that I do struggle with don't take over my life. This anxiety and depression that they don't pull me under the way they had been, honestly. Um, and during that period, I wasn't making anything at all. Instead, I was putting all of these unrealistic expectations of perfection on myself, unrealistic expectations of just um, how I should be living and what I should be doing, what I should be working at, and how crafting was just a waste of time and all of that. Well, I've come to realize that for me, crafting is actually an essential tool in dealing with my mental health and my mental well-being. Because when I'm making, I'm happy. When I'm making, there's a certain joy that I feel that I don't feel when I'm doing anything else. And that's what I'm trying to have more of in my life is joy. I don't think, at least here in the States, I think that most of us could do with a little bit more joy in our lives. And so that's what I'm deliberately trying to work on. So I'm actually crafting more than I have ever before. And luckily I have a family who is wonderful and supportive and they were all there for me during the worst bouts of my struggle with anxiety and depression. I have great friends too who have been wonderfully helpful. Um, but making fulfills something in me that nothing else does. And if you're watching this channel, I'm betting it's the same for you. So, I want to in just encourage you. That's all this video is today, is just really encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, but don't force perfection on yourself. Don't make crafting or making something that you have to do or that you should do. We have enough shoulds in our life. Make it something you get to do that's a joy for you, that brings you something in life that other things just don't. Let it be something that feeds your soul and talk to yourself about that. Tell yourself that you do deserve the time to set aside for your craft, whatever it is. If you're like me, you might bounce from craft to craft and that's okay, I do that. I can't stay focused quite on just one thing all the time. And I had to accept that about myself because I was 
shooting myself on that too. I was thinking, oh, I should just pick one and stick with it. Well, I would get bored with that. Um, like right now, okay. Like right now um, with my sweaters, I gotta tell you, I'm getting a little bit tired already of knitting sweaters. I'm almost finished with my June sweater, by the way, and I'll have it to show to you next time. But if that's the case, if I start feeling stressed about it, what I'm going to do is just give myself a little grace and maybe I'll make a shawl for next month instead of a sweater, even though I have my July sweater picked out. So that's really all I wanna to say to you in this video is go easy on yourself. You deserve some joy in your life. Crafting or making things with your hand, it's, it's valuable. It's valuable because it feeds your soul. It's valuable because it brings beauty into the world. It's, it's valuable fiber arts, good grief. They are practical as well. You're clothing your family, you're keeping them warm. Yes, you could go out and buy something at Walmart. You could buy mittens or gloves or hats at Walmart, but that beauty and that love would not be there the way that it is if you're making them for somebody or if you're making them for yourself, which I think is sometimes even more important to do. Make something for yourself because you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be wrapped in beauty and in care. So. I'm going to keep working on this bat. I will show it to you at the end of this video. But that's really all I wanted to say today was when you're approaching the Tour de Fleece, don't put pressure on yourself. There is definitely no pressure from me involved. If we do awards or something like that, it's probably just going to be um, based on picking a, a random number from everyone who participated. Even if you set a goal and you don't reach it, that's okay. There is absolutely no stress about this at all. This should be something that is fun and joyful in your life. Okay, here we have it. It's a nice fluffy bat that on the inside opens up to reveal this great texture and color. Look at all of that. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more videos like this, please like and subscribe and spread the word. Happy spinning, you all, and please let this be something that's joyful for you, not something that's stressful for you. Thank you for watching, everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.